Today, I'll be reading Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. And it reads, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which intends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Buenas, buenas. Uh, see, everybody knows Spanish. Grande uh, I know this, this uh, pulpit was built for Mr. Terry, but... Uh, I'm going to get shorter, you know. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, it's good to be here. It's wonderful to have the blessing, the opportunity to, uh, to preach this morning. Uh, I know my brothers from Hispanics side, uh, are here too. And also Jonathan is up there uh, translating. And uh, it's wonderful. Uh, talking about the peace of God. Uh, uh, what I'm going to read is what he read. I'm going to repeat uh, Philippians 4, 7. It's, it's amazing what he says here. But uh, it's great. And you know, soon I'm going to be another a, a, a grandpa again. Uh, at the end of this month, my daughter's going to have a uh, Kai. So we are very excited about that. Definitely, yes. Um, Philippians 4, 7 says, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts, your minds, in Christ Jesus. I know these days uh, we have a lot of vacation. People are going to enjoy the time. They go to the mountains. They go to the beaches and relax. Uh, But uh, some people are just taking the time off to enjoy themselves at home. Sometimes people just enjoy the soft music. Uh, others uh, love to drink uh, Dr. Pepper. Uh, I love Dr. Pepper. Uh, uh, I remember when I used to be a missionary, uh, be working in Venezuela. Uh, we came here once or a year, or probably once every two years. And guess, in those days, you could do that. What I took to Venezuela, I took 24 cans of Dr. Pepper. And um, I, uh, I just drink once in a while, because it was a special party when I have a Dr. Pepper. Can you believe that? Yes, because they they don't have Dr. Pepper in Venezuela, and I love Dr. Pepper. It's my favorite drink. But uh, I'm not talking about that kind of uh, peace. I'm going to be talking about those way of peace, to be in peace. You know, I love to fish, and and I used to go with my brother... um, from uh, inner city in Atlanta, and he had a little boat, and we went to the lake at night. We spent all night fishing, so peaceful. But I'm not talking about that peace. That's, uh, I'm going to be talking about another one, very different than that, which, of course, we love to have that kind of peace. But, you know, in heaven, everything was peaceful. It was wonderful. God was there, the angels, everything enjoyed the time together. Fellowship God, having a good time until this angel wanted to disrupt, wanted to destroy the peace. And he certainly made a big mess over there. But the good thing is that when they have this battle between Satan and God, of course, our powerful powerful God conquered. And Satan was Throw away from heaven. He's not there anymore. But this is a problem for us now. Now, in heaven there is peace again. Satan is not there. And we know by Romans 14 that Jesus is preparing our home. Amen? A wonderful place. One day we'll be there, faithful one. But now there is a big problem for us. Has been a problem for us. Satan is not there. It's here. He went to the Garden of Eden, and he saw this newly created woman, so naive. And of course, Satan knew better than her, and 
tempted her, and he, she listened to him, the serpent, disobeyed God, and here we are, paying the consequences. The peace that God wanted here, also Satan destroyed. There is peace now there, but here, there is no peace, because Satan, as you remember, and you can see that, through history, through our history, Satan always win, and we always lose. Adam and Eve lost. Remember the Noah in the time of Noah? Human being lost. Almost everybody was sinning. And God decided to destroy, except Noah, Noah and his family. Remember uh, uh, Solomon and Gomorrah? Everybody was doing what God didn't want it. So, um, uh, loved ones, Satan always won. The human race always lost. Apparently, we didn't have any chance. Apparently. But, remember, Satan lost the first battle there. He was throwing here, and now he's here. But let me tell you something very good uh, to let you know where he is right now. In Jude 6, the Bible says, Jude 6, And the angels who did not stay within their own position of authority, but left their proper dwelling, he has kept in eternal chains under gloomy darkness until the judgment of the great day. So he's in chain. We know he has so much influence on us. And you know the Bible said that we have the, our body, our mind, has the seed of sin in us. And when we grow up, and we are, when we are babies, we are so sweet, loving, everybody wants to kiss the babies, play with the babies. But when we grow up, things change because we start doing the things that we shouldn't, ugly stuff. Because uh, even though Satan is in chain, sin came into the world. And every one of us is going to sin and then became enemy of who? Of God. So we are in a battle against God ourselves until somebody came. And you know who, who came. When Jesus came, everything changed. Now, I know people is always afraid of Satan, and I don't know why. When we talk about Satan, the devil, people start scary, afraid. I say, why? Why are you afraid of Satan? That's my question. If you read the Bible, <laughs> why? Let me just read one of the, the passages. John 16, 11. Look what it says. Concerning judgment because the ruler of this world has been already judged. You know, Satan is already judged. You know why? Because Christ Jesus came here. He's in change. He doesn't have any chance now. Before Jesus came, everybody, us, human being, lost. And he always won. But when Jesus came, um, brothers, everything change. And I don't know, as I said again, why people are still afraid of Satan. I know he is the Lord of this world, yes. Until Jesus came again. When Jesus came, everything changed. He's no more the king, the God of this world, because now Jesus is the one. Not him. Why are you afraid of Satan? Jesus came to destroy whatever he was doing. We know that the Bible uh, talked to him about the prince of this world. So many wonderful names about Satan. But remember, that was before. Because Jesus came and took away from him 
everything. So apparently, we didn't have any chance. That's why we didn't have peace with God. Because everybody sinned. And we know the pain for our sin was condemnation. And everybody was in that road. But when Jesus came, brothers and sisters, everything changed. Let me read Galatians 4.4. 4. Galatians 4.4. 4. Before this happened, everybody was in sin. No chance. You didn't have any chance. I didn't have any chance. But when this happened, everything started changing in our favor. Yes. Galatians 4.4, 4, but when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born, born under the law. Jesus came. And he started taking away everything that the devil was taking from us. He was defeated. First, he was defeated by Jesus himself in heaven. Now, remember Matthew 4, the temptations? Three times he tried to destroy Jesus. Three times he tempted him. But three times Jesus defeated him. So four times Jesus had defeated Satan. Now, who dwells inside of you? It's not the Holy Spirit. It's not God the Father. It's not Jesus. Who defeated Satan? Who dwells inside of you? It's not the same one who defeated him? Who is much more powerful? The one who is in the world, according to John, the one who is in the world or the one who dwells in us? Who is more powerful? The one who dwells in us. The Holy Spirit. So I ask again, why are you afraid of Satan? Doesn't make any sense to me. First John 3, 8. I, I know the world is full of sadness, war, starvation, suffering. Yes, we know that. Because they don't know God. But us, as Christians, as followers of Jesus Christ, the one who defeated so far, so far, Satan four times is in us. So what are you afraid? You're supposed to be living in peace. Jesus said, I came to bring you life. In abundantly. Is that what he said? Yes or not? Yes. So, are you enjoying life? Because we are in peace with whom? We're in peace with God. Our sins were forgiven when we were baptized into Christ, Romans 6. So, enjoy life. The world is so sad, so, so many troubles. For us Christians to live like that? No. We're in peace with God. We're in peace with him. And that says more than enough. Now, 1 John 3, 8. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. One of the many reasons. But because we're talking about Satan having peace, Jesus came to destroy him. You know how I, I call him? Probably I already told you about that. I repeat this word all the time in the Hispanic congregation. Satan is a loser. He's a loser. It is or no, it's not. He's a loser. He was beaten by Jesus four times so far. And he came to destroy whatever he was doing to mess us up. No more. That's why we have the word of God. That's why we have the Holy Spirit inside us. So, why to be afraid of a loser? <laughs> I don't understand. 
Christians don't supposed to be afraid of a loser. No. Let's be afraid of God. Amen? That's what Jesus said. I'm going to teach you to whom you are supposed to be afraid. Not Satan. It's a loser. It's in chain. But God is all powerful. That's why we have peace. I know when we talk about death and sometimes I talk to Santiago. Santiago, are you ready to die? Well, you know, I, I know where I'm going to go, but I don't want to die yet. I understand what he's saying because, you know, I, I'm going to have another grandbaby. I don't want to die yet, but I know where I'm going. May sound like well, what, what the Edison think he is. I'm a child of God, and I trust his promises. Amen. So I know where I'm going. That's what Paul said. I know where I'm going. Why, why not you? Can you say the same if you are faithful to God? Yes, you can say the same. Because we're in peace with God now. And Satan is a loser. <laughs> oh, man, to be afraid of Satan. Uh, uh, please don't be afraid of uh, all a loser. No. Absolutely. Now, there are two more. Defeat for Satan, brothers. That's why we have peace with God and we need to look the peace with each other. Yes. Now, uh, uh, I want to read Colossians 2.15. Colossians 2.15. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to shame by triumphing over them in him. You know where? In the cross. He defeated Satan one more time, even though he thought that he was defeating Jesus when he was on the cross, but that was God's plans. Amen? And the third day, what happened? He was raised from the dead. So, he lost again. Remember, before Jesus came, we were lost. No chance. But he made all the difference. Jesus made the difference. And now we can say, we are in peace with God. Satan is a loser. Did you hear before this song, Don't Worry, Be Happy? <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> be happy. Yeah, sometimes we have troubles. It's normal. We are in this world. We have a body. Things happen. But we have a promise. Satan can do Nothing against you unless you open the door. Remember Peter? He's a, I don't know how to say it in Spanish, in English. He's like a lion going around and around and around. One of the days he's going to get like dizzy and fall down. There's so many times around and around because he cannot come into your life or my life unless I allow him. Because he can do nothing. He's a loser. Yeah, he's a loser. We are more, con more than conquerors. Is that what the Bible says? We are more than conquerors. Yes. Because of Jesus. Amen? So don't be afraid of a loser. Don't. We are in peace with God. And we are waiting for him to come back. Amen? And one day he's coming. He is come. So don't worry. Be happy. <laughs> so we are in peace with God. Amen? Yes, we are. And uh, we have been saved. We have been clean, sanctified, purified. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Amen? Romans 8, 1. There is no condemnation. So don't worry. Be happy. Be faithful. Yes. Be holy. Yes. Don't mess around. Don't mess around so we don't lose what we have in Christ Jesus. Amen? So we have the peace of God. Now, John 14, 27 says this. Peace I live with you. This is a real peace inside Peace doesn't, doesn't depend on the outside, my brothers in, in Christ. Peace does not depend if you have 
or you don't have. Because the peace that Jesus promised is inside. Peace, I live with you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives, gives do I give you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Don't worry, be happy. Don't worry about a loser. He gave us, he gave you the peace that we need in this troubled world. And he wants you to enjoy that peace that only he can give. Don't worry, be happy. Finally, uh, he had been defeated, I think, uh, five times, I believe, yes. In heaven, three temptations, and then in the cross. Five times. But it's one more. One more, and with this, I finish. It's amazing what this verse uh, says. Go with me to um, uh, Romans 16.20. Romans 16.20. My brothers and sisters, don't be afraid, Satan. Keep the peace with God, it's most important. Let's be strong in the Lord. Don't sin. Please don't. Let's be holy. Let's enjoy the fellowship that we have in Christ. It's wonderful. One more defeat for Satan. The Bible says, Romans 16, 20, the God of peace, do you hear that? The God of peace, yes, will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you soon. When? When he comes second time. But he's going to crush him. Because us, human beings, weak, believe in God, believe in Jesus, even though we haven't seen him yet. That is why God is going to tell us and telling us one more time He's going to defeat Satan when he comes for the second time. So, um, brothers, I think this is more than enough for us to see how wonderful is God. Satan used to win no more. He's a loser. We have the peace of God. We have the hope of salvation in heaven when he comes the second time. So, don't worry. Even though there are situations, be happy. Enjoy life because God has given you the right as his children. So God loves you very much. And uh, I know there are, as I say, troubles. Sometimes we're cool because we don't follow his commandments. But it's this morning. You just need the peace of God. Not because you have or may not, even you have troubles today. You are not the only one. But he came to give us peace, the real peace inside of us. You just need to recognize your situation, come to God humbly, ask for his forgiveness, and he will be very glad to forgive you when you obey in the baptism and be raised as a new creature to enjoy life. Those who already are Christians don't having some troubles, situations. Yes, remember, God loves you very much. He's the God of peace. He wants you, even through troubles time, to experience his peace. And he loves you very much. So while you don't stand, while we sing this song of invitation, this is a song of invitation, while you don't stand at this moment, and if you are ready to come, I know the elders are here, I'm here, if you want to, anything that you need from us, at this moment, to be in peace with God, if you are not, come forward while we sing this song.